Now, if to some, you have the first task, and I'm serious that even though you're a charming young lady, nonetheless, if you go over six or seven minutes, I'm going to be um, firm and say, no, you've got to stop. Badly. Thank you. Uh, I hope it's working. Thank you. You know, uh, they call me the general because I'm very firm. Excellent. It's <laughs> uh, uh, also, I have uh, a mission impossible, they call it, how to wake up those uh, whom they are just came from, uh, from lunch. Well, I, I look at it on, on general, on the Middle East, that the, the, the geopolitical and, and uh, economic characteristic in the Middle East uh, uh, during the ongoing decade, uh, 2021, uh, 2030, are likely to be significantly governed by, by the following realities. First, the post-COVID uh, scenarios and its economic uh, and security fallouts. Second, the dynamics arising from uh, U.S. declining presence and involvement in the Middle East, leading to uh, questions over the possible uh, uh, emergence of collective security uh, structure in the Gulf region and, and beyond. Uh, the regional security uh, arrangements and the geopolitical and economic competition in the East Mediterranean, the Red Sea, uh, and the Arabian Sea would also uh, be critical factors. The third is the uh, preparing for the post-oil uh, era includes uh, uh, prioritizing the, the agenda of combating climate change challenges. It will also uh, uh, raise a question related to the shifts uh, in the social contract in the Gulf countries in the post-oil rentier uh, policies also uh, aligned to this reality are the requirements imposed by these policies to manage the public sphere. A uh, question about uh, linking enti uh, entitlement for citizens which achievement and uh, productivity uh, and the subsequent changes in the, in the war culture and conditions. Fourth, the extent of the growing Sino American trade uh, and geopolitical uh, competitions impact on the Middle East and the regional countries response to the new Cold War would also be uh, important uh, development. Uh, moreover, uh, are we going to witness a multi-lateral uh, 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 international uh, order and, and, and severe international uh, polarization, uh, if yes, would uh, uh, they foil attempts by US allies in the, in the Gulf, the Arab region, uh, and other countries in the region to establish some balance? Such uh, a policy would diversify current uh, strategic options in a trade with China or Russia. This raises uh, the question whether the Middle East uh, would witness post-Washington uh, allies attempt to strike a, a, a relative balance between uh, the U.S. and other great powers. This is what we will see in this uh, decades. Also, fifth, considering the decline of political Islam in Morocco, Tunisia, Sudan, Jordan, and other countries. Now, it's likely that this decade or at least part of it uh, would become the post-political Islam phase. Uh, however, no strong indications suggest that Middle East countries and societies are prepared to overcome the identity crisis. Hence, uh, the entanglement of security, economy, and politics with history, religion, identity questions are highly likely to uh, continue and build societal uh, agreement on laws, system, 
and the management of public sphere and the system of rights and freedom, all this is linked to a single question. Will Middle Eastern countries become more stable or prone uh, to conflict have lessened been learned from the past two decades. If the decline of political Islam continues, what domestic alternatives will replace it? Would these alternatives be able to tackle uh, the multiple structure uh, problem in running uh, public affair in, in the region? These are the questions. How many minutes I have? Uh, you got another two. Two? Okay, now... You can stop now if you want to, it's up to you. It's okay, I, I will stop here and, and I will... Uh, sure, Akid? Okay. Uh, if, okay. It's okay. Yeah, because we can come I, back. I, I bet you save my two minutes later. Okay, exactly, Thank perfect. You. And actually, I'm very pleased that, first of all, first of all the post-political Islam idea, it's, it's very, very interesting, because we heard, I think, in the Afghanistan panel before lunch that uh, Al-Qaeda and uh, Islamic State are by no means dead and could be reviving. But as you say, the, the, what has happened in Morocco is actually very encouraging. And you also mentioned the, the post-oil, which reminds me of that um, famous saying by Juan Pablo Perez Alfonso, 1975. He was a Venezuelan oil minister. And he said, said um, I call petroleum the devil's excrement. A very colorful phrase, but of course has quite a lot of force because if you think of outsiders' influence and, and interventions in the Arab world and in Iran, an awful lot of it has been because of oil and gas and the, 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 the struggle to control them. So um, you know, the past has been quite complicated. But we are perhaps moving towards a past oil era. Yes. Yeah. I, I, a long time I wrote uh, an article that said, uh, is oil a bless or a curse on the on yeah. the GCC? Yeah, exactly. Yeah.